Where are Paul Chris's weak spots? Where is he holding the program back? We're going to talk about that and more on today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Ryan Herring's your host of Locked On Badgers. Thank you for making this your first listen or one of your first listens every day. Really, really appreciate it. I've been on vacation for a couple of days. The Wi-Fi has been terrible, so I apologize for um, not getting a show out as quick as possible, but we're going to have a good one today. Um, first, today's show is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. BetOnline has you covered today with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline, where the game starts. So I wanted to talk about Paul Christ and take a critical look at it. And for the record, if you all remember... I did a Paul Chris. I did a Big Ten coach ranking show. And I had Paul Chris third in the Big Ten. So I like Paul Chris. I'm a Paul Chris fan. I think he's a really good coach. However, I think you have to be real and you have to be able to take an honest look at the the strengths and the weaknesses, right? There, there are some weaknesses. I think some real obvious ones with Paul Chris where it's frustrating because if if I thought Paul Christ was just a terrible inept coach, I wouldn't really obsess over the weak spots. But I think he is so close to being a great head coach. I think he's a really good one right now. I think there's a couple like rough spots, like the the everything is welded together really well, and there's just a couple spots you had to kind of grind to smooth it out. And I want to talk about the spots right in, in today's show. Let me know if you think I'm wrong. Uh, comment below, uh, if you, or leave a comment, tweet at me, whatever it is. If you think I'm being too hard on Paul Christ, or if you agree, or if you think there's a, an area Paul Christ needs to get better at that I don't cover, definitely let me know. I'm here for the Discord. I'm here for the chat. So let's get into it. Let's start with the obvious one. The defense has carried this team for really Paul Christ's entire tenure. The defense has carried this team, and he's an offensive coach. That's a red flag, right? Like, he's a quarterback guy. He's an offensive guy. He's a quarterback guru. First of all, again, I'm not trying to be, I want everyone to understand. I like Paul Chris. I've already said that. I'm also going to do a show on where I think Paul Chris has exceeded expectations and where he's elevated the program. So that show is coming up. But on this show, we're going to talk about the foibles. I think you take the quarterback guru label and you got to put it up on a shelf somewhere where Paul Chris can't reach it. Like, you know, a Christmas present for the kids before Christmas, because you can't give them that anymore. He, he, you can't have the level of substandard quarterback play. This program has had for a while and still call Paul Chris the quarterback guru. The offense hasn't been good enough. It just, that's that's the long and short of it. And when you're an offensive head coach, you're a play calling head coach, you've been the quarterback's coach, and your passing game has been ninth in the conference, fourth. I'm just reading off the, the his passing game ranks, nine, four, nine, three, eight, nine, since he's been the, the Big Ten coach at Wisconsin since he's been the head coach at Wisconsin, that's not good enough. It averages out to about sixth or seventh in the conference over his span at, from a passing rating perspective. I'm not looking at passing yards. I'm not looking at touchdowns because Wisconsin's not a volume passing game. That wouldn't be fair. I'm looking at efficiency. And this is a very mediocre passing game from an efficiency standpoint. And quite frankly, with the running game Wisconsin has had, with the offensive line Wisconsin's had, it should be easier to pass. Wisconsin is is constantly facing eight, nine in the box. And we still haven't been able to string together an effective passing game. That's, that's a big problem. And it, this all ties together. Everyone is there. Here's what I don't like, right? When, when people start saying, well, it's, it's Mertz or it's Chris or it's recruiting. No, it's all of it. It's all of it. The passing game and the offense, it's an ecosystem. It all has to work together. Like you have to recruit good quarterbacks and you have to develop them. And then you have to call a game plan that makes sense. And it feels like we're falling short in every single one of those areas. And when you fall short in all those areas, you got to look at who's the coach doing it. It's Paul Christ. So, again, not trying to be too harsh, but the passing game has not been good enough, period, point blank. And if it doesn't get better, this team's not going to beat the Ohio States. They're not going to beat consistently the teams they should beat because the passing game holds them back. So you look at recruiting. Like I said, it's, it's an ecosystem. You have to look at all this. Well, the recruiting hasn't been good enough. This cycle, they haven't landed anybody. They've struck out on all their targets. Last year, Miles Burkett, in-state kid. I think that's a good, I think that's a good win. I like Miles Burkett, right? But you know, he's probably not a program changer. I don't know. It's too, it's way too early to say. The year before Deacon Hill, I think it's a red flag that Deacon Hill is at 260 pounds. I've talked about that. You know, in the previous year, they skipped the year after Graham Mertz committed. They didn't bring anybody in. You know, uh Chase Wolf wasn't a hit. So 
quarterback recruiting outside of Mertz really hasn't been very good. And then development, Chase Wolf came in the program. He hasn't developed at all. Mertz hasn't certainly not lived up to his standard. You know, Deacon Hill didn't travel with the team last year. So recruiting hasn't been that great. The development hasn't happened. And then you look at the game planning, and it doesn't seem like our quarterbacks are ever in a position to succeed. You know, Graham Mertz, for all the people who want to point a finger at Graham Mertz, and I listen, I hear you. He hasn't been good enough. And he'll tell he'll tell you that. Graham Mertz will say, I'm not good. I haven't been good enough. Too many turnovers, inconsistency. He's also had a different quarterback coach every single year. And again, you you that's on Paul Christ. You have to establish an ecosystem where your quarterback can develop. And if you give him a different coach every year, that's tough. If you if you have a GA coaching the quarterback spot, that's kind of tough. You know, and that's what since John Budmeyer left. Paul Christ has relied on graduate assistants, essentially coaching that position. This year, you know, they have Keller Christ as a GA, and they have Bobby Ingram as a former tight end slash receivers coach. Once again, you have to wonder if Paul Christ is giving the quarterbacks the resources they need to develop. You know, we've had a special teams, dedicated special teams coach on the, on the staff for a long time in Chris Herring. Well, maybe it would have been better – to have an actual legitimate quarterbacks coach, right? Maybe that would have made more sense. And I've always thought you can't scrimp on the most important position in football, and that's quarterback. And it feels like they have, and it feels like the results on the field bear that out. So I think it all comes back to Paul Christ. Now, do I think it it's going to get better? Yeah, I actually do, because I really like Bobby Ingram. And if you listen to reports from inside the program, the quarterbacks seem to really like Keller Christ. So I think that's a good combination. Um, I hope it gets better. I think Bobby Ingram is going to bring some things to the the passing game that make a little more sense, that open it up a little bit. I think he's here to bring some new ideas, which is phenomenal. But if you look back again, we're looking back at what Chris has done here, where he's fallen short, where he's maybe held the program back in a few areas. You have to look immediately at the passing game. You have to look at the quarterbacks. And that's really, if you want to point to one person to kind of put – that, that lay that wreath of blame, it's it's Paul Christ. You know, the passing game has held this program back. And, <clears throat> you know, a lot of that comes back to, I think there was a bit of hubris with, with Paul, who thought he could do all of these things. He could be a quarterback's guru and call plays and be the head coach and manage the X's and O's and manage the game and establish the culture. And he fell short because nobody can do all of that. And I think Paul's really good. Again, I think Paul's a really good head coach, but... I think he spread himself too thin and it hurt the program and it hurt the quarterback position. So that's really the, the first one I want to start with. Everybody let me know if you think I'm way off base on this. If I'm putting too much of this on Paul Christ, certainly possible. I like the moves that have happened this offseason. So we're going to see where that goes. Coming up next, I'm going to give you another one where I think Paul Christ, I think especially in bigger games where he really kind of hurts the program at times. So listen up. Uh, stay tuned for that one. First, today's show is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline remains your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and information, all your newest sports news, where the latest coach is going. There's tons of stuff happening in the NBA right now with the trade market. You can find all of that on BetOnline. The website's easy to use, and it's a great place for futures. You know, with, with all the NBA trade action and free agency, if you have a great feel on an NBA team, this is a great time to get into it. Baseball pennant races are going on, football futures. We talked about the Badgers over under 8.5. BetOnline is your number one source for all of that. They also have you covered with live Vegas games, blackjack, roulette. It remains your number one spot for all your sports, scores, podcasts, information, and betting needs. For, uh, BetOnline.net is the fastest, easiest way to check in on all of that. Use your mobile device today to learn more about the trends and actions. BetOnline, where the game starts. Thank you again, everybody, for making Lockdown Badgers one of your first listens. Really appreciate the community that's been built. Again, I apologize uh, that I haven't had content out for a couple of days. I really tried. This vacation Wi-Fi situation has just crushed me. But, you know, we're going to continue to build the community and continue to try to give you guys and give everybody listening the best Badger content we can. So continue on this discussion. And I've, I've wanted to get into this for a while about where I think Paul Chris maybe falls a tiny bit short, where I think he needs to grow a little bit as a coach. And that's fine, by the way. We all need to grow. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's ever a finished product. So I'm I, I keep saying I'm not trying to crush Paul Christ here, but there's things that have hurt the program. And I really want to just have the discussion and keep it real. Let's talk about game management. Let's talk about game management, Paul Christ. I mentioned in the previous segment, I think a part of Paul Christ's issue is he spread himself too thin. I think he's been trying to do too much. I said it 
you know, before last year, I said, you can't be a head coach. You can't be a quarterback's coach, run the program, manage the game, call the plays. It's too much. And I think it really impacted game management. We can all remember that Minnesota situation, um, just an absolute disaster of a Minnesota situation where, you know, Wisconsin's trailing late in the game. They send the punt team in when they had to go for it. They end up taking a penalty and sending the offense back out. I mean, it was that was some high school level game mismanagement. And I don't know what happened. Paul Chris, to his credit, took credit for it. He said, you know, you can lay that one on me. But yeah, that was ugly. And I think we see more situations like that in, in game management where Paul Christ just isn't as on top of it as he needs to be. I'll give you another one that, that drives me nuts with Paul. If you get the ball before half, Paul Christ is entirely content over the course. Of, and you can look this up in, in game summaries, drive charts. If you get the ball before halftime with a minute and a half to go, two minutes to go, Paul Christ will just hand the ball off. And unless you break a big run, he's pretty content just to run that out and go to half. And I think it is so backwards. It is a a throwback to a conservative mindset of football where he probably kind of learned that playing in the 80s, uh, coaching under Barry Alvarez. He's an old school coach, for better and worse. There's there's areas where I think it's really beneficial. I think the culture building is a, a Chris strength, and that comes from an old school mentality. But the the inability to understand we can't give away possessions, right? Before halftime, you got to throw the ball. You can't just hand off a draw to Garrett Groshek and hope you break one. And then if you do break one, then you suddenly go into this hurry-up offense. This is a, a Paul Chris tradition. It's something Rich from the Buck Around when he's on the show talked about as well. It's always driven me nuts. He is so content with just giving away a possession before half. Uh, it's got to change. You don't. It's got to change. He's too conservative, especially in big games in those little moments. You know, another one is going for it on fourth down. Again, Paul is so okay with punting from the 40-yard line, the opponent's 40, the opponent's 37, right, and trying to pin a team when other teams, Jim Harbaugh's going for it, Ryan Day's going for it, Nick Saban's going for it, Dabo's going for it, and those teams have more talent and they're coaching more aggressively. You know, in those situations, Paul needs to get a little more aggressive. He needs to find a way to steal possessions in big games against teams that it's difficult for Wisconsin to beat. I'll give you a great example. Last year's Michigan game, you know, obviously Michigan thumped Wisconsin, Harbaugh went for four, uh, went for it on fourth down five times in that game, got four of them. Paul Chris went for it once. You know, so Harbaugh stole four possessions by going for it on fourth down. And Chris Paul is so content, you know, on like a fourth and five from the opponent's 39 yard line with punting. And analytically, like they've done studies on this, you should almost never punt from the opponent's side of the field, right? Uh, because even if punters aren't great, especially college punters, and we, Wisconsin's a pretty good one, but the chances of you pinning them at the one, a lot of times the ball rolls into the end zone or goes out at the 15. You're only gaining 20, 30 yards of field possession and you have a great defense. Like it's okay to let the other team start at the 39 yard line against this Wisconsin defense occasionally. If it means occasionally extending your possession, right? Occasionally keeping the ball. The other thing I talk about is we talked about the struggles on offense you know, getting getting down into the 37, that might be the best chance Wisconsin has to score. So you have to find ways to extend possessions. You have to take more chances. It, it almost feels like the the tougher the opponent, the bigger the game, the more conservative Paul Christ almost gets. You know, always kind of punting from the other side. Um, always, excuse me, before halftime, running the clock out. And that's just something that he needs to get better at. I think he needs to grow there. And it, Listen, there's context in everything. I'm not saying go for it every fourth down. I'm not saying every time you're at the opponent's 40, you have to go for it. If you're up 21 points, punt the ball. Absolutely. But it seems like Paul Chris too often defaults to conservative. Too often defaults to we're going to play field position. We're going to play a football game like it's the 80s and it's going to be 7-6. to six. You uh, Eventually, the defense breaks against Ohio State, right? You need to steal possessions. You need to go for it a little more often. Before halftime, for Pete's sake, you got to go for a score, like stop handing the ball off on the first play of every every possession before halftime, hoping you break one, or if not, you're content to run it out. So <clears throat> I think that's a big one for me. I think the the game management and the conservativeness really kind of holds this program back in big games. And I think it's something Paul needs to get better at. I'm hopeful, really, really hopeful that Bobby Ingram coming in has a little bit more of an aggressive mindset, a little younger, and he's able to kind of help dictate, dictate some of those, you know, um, time and and uh, possession areas. So, um, one more coming up. I think another area where I think Paul Christ 
tends to hurt the program by maybe not focusing on the big picture. So that's coming up next. I do want to talk about today's show also brought to you. We talked about Bet Online. Today's show is also brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the world's number one uh, job job source for both interviewees and interviewers. Um, create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn jobs. Reach your network beyond reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network. Over 810 million people interact with LinkedIn. Add your job and people will find you. You're able to add filters so you can pre-screen out applicants that don't have the right skills or experience. That makes it quicker for you to find the right person to interview, to get that person in the door. And it makes it quicker on the people that are interviewing so they know that they're going to be in a spot to land the job. It is, as I said, the number one source. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn number one in de- uh, de- delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn. 40 million people every week. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you again, everybody, for listening to Lockdown Badgers, for bearing with me on my vacation uh, Wi-Fi experience. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to give you the other one with Paul Chris that I think hurts the program. And this is kind of a double-edged sword. But Paul Chris treats every game almost like a Super Bowl. And, and let me explain what I mean by that. Paul Chris is totally content against really bad teams just to throw the ball nine times, run at 70, and basically like a bully on a schoolyard, just sit on them, right? Run out the clock, get out with a win, 28 to three, whatever. The problem with that is the passing game needs those reps. Like you have, you can't just pass when you need to. I think this is something that doesn't get talked about enough. Paul Chris. And recently, especially recently, last couple of years, it almost feels like they only want to throw the ball when they absolutely have to. And if that's the situation you're putting your passing game in, they're not going to be as successful. They need reps. They need 20 throws against Army, against Purdue. And instead, it's 11 throws, 15 throws. You're not winning. You're not getting your quarterback the, the development, the passing game, the development, the receivers, the development, the tackles, the development, if you never actually give them those game reps against bad teams. That's the time to work some of that stuff out. If you're only going to throw it 30, 40 times against Notre Dame when you need to because the running game isn't working or against Ohio State, you're probably not going to get the success you want. And it it becomes kind of a – you need to look at some of those games like building blocks to the bigger ones, in my opinion, a little more strategically. And whereas Paul Chris, I think they just look at it as every day we go 1-0, and kind of that old Brett Bielema mentality. We're going to go 1-0 and today, and we're going to beat them. We're going to run the ball, and that's great, but – I don't think you're doing your quarterback any confidence. I don't think you're doing him any favors, right? If if you only let him throw 9, 10, 11 times against bad teams, I think you're hurting recruiting, right? If if a quarterback sees they're going to throw the ball 9 times, 10 times against bad teams, I don't think they want to come there. You know, Braden Dorman, who we were after in this cycle, said that. He said, you know, it's not a very passing-friendly offense. And he's right. He's absolutely right. It hasn't been. You know, part of this is you got to – Get Graham Mertz or whoever the quarterback it is. You got to get the receivers, whoever they are, feeling good about themselves. You know how you do that? You let them throw 20 times against a bad defense. You give them that Illinois experience where Graham Mertz threw five touchdowns. And occasionally before halftime, this ties into what I was saying earlier, but before halftime, you also let Graham Mertz just try to leave a, lead a two-minute drive, even if you don't need it in that game, because you're going to need it later in the season. And I think that's where Paul Christ has really hurt the passing game with this conservative mindset let them throw against the bad teams. Let them air it out a little bit more. I mean, I'm not saying we're going air raid, but give them 15 to 20 throws against the, the bad teams, and he's going to be better prepared against the good teams. He's going to have those reps, and quite frankly, they're probably going to have a little mojo. It matters. These kids are young kids. You know, 19, 20, 21, 22-year-olds, mojo matters. Confidence matters. Like, stacking good performances matters. If you go out there against Army again or just whatever team and you let them throw 11 times, you tell me that doesn't, get them pressing a little bit like they don't they're not getting into a rhythm you're never letting them get into a rhythm so I think I'm um, again I hope Bobby Ingram comes in and is able to adjust some of this you know just to kind of review it I think the passing game the development the recruiting has not been good enough I think the in-game management at times is way too conservative with Paul Christ and then I I don't think they allow the offensive playmakers to to grow and get the reps they need against the bad teams and I think all of those things if you combine them it kind of goes into hurting the offense. It hurts the passing game. And they're all areas where I don't think any of them are dramatic fixes. You know, Paul Chris is a really good coach. I've said it. He runs a good program. I do not want him fired. I don't want him going anywhere. 
but there's areas if he could just buff out these little areas i think the program could be so much better so that's the show today i hope everybody enjoyed it let me know if you think i'm wrong let me know if i'm being too hard on paul chris or if you don't think i'm hard enough on him we're going to talk about another show coming up about all the things paul chris has done really well where he's exceeded my expectations where he's elevated the program and uh we're definitely going to get into that as well Thank you, everybody, for listening to Locked On Badgers, making it one of your first listens every day. I really, really appreciate it as we continue to build this community. If you like the show, please leave a like, subscribe, review. Um, all that stuff helps the show. And until we talk later, um, hope you're all having a really good July, and we'll talk soon.